I know that um, one thing that has happened with this COVID-19 is that a number of industries are now thinking that, okay, you have to shift from the brick and mortar um, to, to virtual space, to online. We're now hearing um, buzzwords like um, digitalization, digitization, innovation. How does this apply in agriculture? Is there a way we can actually um, um, leverage on some technology to probably um, help us advance a little bit more faster than we are currently? Um, what do you think, Mr. Ramvia? Is there, is there, how can we leverage on technology in Nigeria? I know we talk about, I mean, there, there, are, there are stuff like aeroponics, hydroponics, there are a couple of um, Nigerian companies um, getting involved in that. Even though we have a very large um, arable, arable land size, uh, I think about 60, 70% of our land is very arable, and um, we may not really need so much about um, um, aeroponics or hydroponics as such, that's my view. But then, beyond that, what other technology can we leverage on? So actually, along the, um, the, 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 the value chain of agriculture, what technology can we leverage on that can help us advance the, 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 the the growth in this um, sector faster. Thank you, Femi. It is very well that you talk about the technological advantages, even digitization that we can lean on. But brother Femi, I have to say that the time has come, especially in Nigeria, our situation, to go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. I spoke about digitized supply chains in Singapore and COVID is showing us the weakness of all those. In a real crisis, what we need, how will food reach Lagos? How will food reach Gombe? How will food reach Abuja? So what I did, you made a mention about the arable land in Nigeria. We don't realize how blessed we are as a country. 78% of Nigerian land is arable. And by comparison, South Africa, 12% of the land is arable. We don't realize it. South Africa is a far bigger agriculture superpower than Nigeria. Today, you look at the God's gift to us. So the framework that I have, uh, uh, Femi, I know that you run attitude at the end of it, we are here to give solutions. The way I see forward, I will keep aside the digitization and technology for a moment. The model that I will put on the table will be that let me pick up the top 50 cities of Nigeria. And what happens, the smallest of those cities has a population of 200,000. So these 50 cities has a population of 200,000 or more. And let me design uh, agri food supply chain around that. What we need to feed the city without changing the palate that Ade mentioned earlier to grow our yams, some cereal, some vegetables, fruits, eggs, and some meat. By my calculation, we need 20,000 hectares for a city of 200,000. A city of 200,000 is like Gombe, is like uh, Ovo, so Suleja. Some of these cities have 200,000 population, just for, to give the picture clear. We need smallholder farmers. I'm talking about a farmer with two hectares of land. And this model, which, will, which should come up post-COVID, that farmer will be able to make an income of 2 million naira simply by growing the food that we know without any serious technological inputs and supply to the city next door. And how many farmers are we talking about? These 50 cities have a population in Nigeria of between 30 and 35 million total. Each farmer will feed about 20 city dwellers. So we need to develop this program and work with the government, work with investors and corporates. All the production factors are in place and we are blessed, like I mentioned earlier, our land is arable. 
So I will be happy to work with you to give specific solutions to people who take it forward. There is a role for corporates like Ades, but we don't have to only depend on them to grow our food. We need to give 2 million Naira income to our smallholder farmer and encourage them to deliver solutions that are critically required by our cities. So that I see FEMI as the net outcome of this COVID crisis for the agri and food and food processing and the related supply chain in Nigeria. Over okay. to you. Femi, oh, Femi, 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 as an addendum to what, as an addendum to what uh, Ravia said, it's yes. very, very true. I mean, see, what is important is let's have cooperatives, okay, farmers form cooperatives, and those cooperatives are the smallholder farmers we are talking about who are in cooperatives. Yeah, exactly. Give them give them micro credits, okay? Like Olam again, we are we are large, but you see, it it doesn't make sense for us to be planting cocoa, cashew, sesame, and the likes. What is important is to have farmers or cooperatives who plant this yeah. and you offtake from them. So that's what is important. So not every large behemoth, not every company can be a large behemoth, okay? So those small scale farmers are very, very, very important. He spoke to the issue of not relying too much on technology. It's, you know, because we have to go back to the basics. We have to press the reset button, okay? We have to go back to what I would call tabula rasa, okay? <laughs> Clean slate <laughs> and start, you know, start afresh. So don't get me wrong, for, for, for where we are right now, it's 4 million hectares of arable land, less than yeah. one third of it, less than one third of it is cultivated. Okay? But you see, even, even now, people tell you about, not, it's not the land that you cultivate that's important, it's the technology you use. Yes, in some, in some advanced countries, yes, that might work. But in Nigeria, where we're still struggling with subsistence, it's important, because if you, if you, look, if you look at what we have right now, the, the, the uh, African Development Bank has been talking about what you call agro-industrial parks or agro-industrial zones. So yes. every country has comparative advantage in growing either soya somewhere, cocoa somewhere and all that. So what you need to do is to just divide the country into those geopolitical zones and have an anchor investor there who can now start off taking. So you have linkages around that entire value chain for that particular crop. So that you know where that crop is coming from. If you're talking about ginger, I mean, Kaduna State is the largest producer of ginger in the country. Okay, Gombe is the largest. Uh, uh, Gombe, uh, sorry, uh, Kebi is the largest producer of onions in the country. And we can go on and on and on and on and on. We're the largest producer of, of yam in the world. We're the largest producer of uh, of cassava in the world. Yet we import starch. So all those derivatives, therefrom, we need to harness them. So this is time for us to look inwards. COVID-19, post-COVID-19, it presents an opportunity. Let's not be looking at the challenges all the time. Let yeah. us just, you know, have a whole, a, a concerted effort to make sure that we develop agriculture, not arithmetically, but geometrically. What we've been doing in the last couple of years is we've been growing agriculture arithmetically. Let oh. us try and do that geometrically. Okay, thank you. Very, thank you very much for that insight.